All right, let's just address the 700 pound gorilla in the room, right? <laughs> I mean, we all know Dave's is intense and, you know, on game day, that's just, that's him, you know? So it's, it's not a big deal. It's, it's happened before, it, you know, it's just, that's just part of the game. So he's an intense guy. We have no issues and, you know, that's just part of football. It's an intense game. It ain't, you know. Oh. How about the 400 pound girl? Why were there only 10 men on the field? Well, I mean, and this is the process of the preseason. Like this happens in every game around the league. This is not new. This is something that just happens. When you have guys, say for example, a guy that was a starting running back in college, all right? And he's used to on every down, he's running the football, he's running, he's catching, he's running the football. And then on third down or fourth down, he comes off the field. He's not on the punt team. So a lot of times when these kids, these young guys, when they get into these competitive environments, muscle memory kicks in. So he's used to on third down, if they don't make the first down, what does he do? He's used to going to the bench. Well, it's not like that anymore. Okay, you're on the punt team now. Now you got to get out there and go cover a punt and protect it. So, I mean, that, that's just part of the maturation process of all of these young guys. They have to understand that they're not in college anymore. They're not starters. A lot of them aren't starters anymore. So when there's a fourth down play, you don't run off the field. You stay on the field, and that's just the reality of it. Was that X who came running on the field? No, 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 it wasn't. On the, on the gray return, a nice return, mm -hmm. uh, was there, did, did you, when you went back and looked at the film, did you see a penalty? I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. it was and it was probably 20 yards away from the ball the other side yeah and it wasn't necessary and, and again another young guy who's used to um, you know if you go back and you look at college football they don't call holding on the turf it's it's a free-for-all I've never seen anything like in my, my life but they're used to playing that way so they think it's normal you know so but when you get to this level even though you might have a guy in a dominating position and you're in a good spot, you can't take him to the ground. Like any time in our league on any returns, you take a guy to the ground, they're throwing the flag. That's, but college football is not like that. You know, so again, that's just part of the maturation process. These guys learning how the game is played on this level, and it's a little bit different. Did uh, the people approach you like either after the game or on the bus ride home about that? Because obviously it was seen on TV. As like, far on as? On the sideline. So no. like, was it something you guys talked about or not? No. No, I mean, that's, that's football. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, it happens. I mean, it's just, it's, it's what it is. I mean, we, it's an intense game. It's, it's not that big of a deal. We all, you know, I promise you, if you look at my face sometimes during the course of a game, you're going to see some crazy stuff too, you know? So, I mean, it's just, it's just what it is. You'll see some stares and glares and, because that's just the game, you know, it's yeah, 10. T -Mac <laughs> t -Mac, Jamie hit that punt 67 yards. Yeah. Now, in golf, when you hit a lag punt, you're hitting, trying to hit a target area, mm -hmm. like three feet from the hole, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Is there a target area for a punt? And what kind of problems does it cause if you don't hit it? Right, so that's a great question. So mainly we want the hang to match the distance. Okay, what does that mean? All right, so if we have a 48 yard punt, we want at least four, six, four, seven or more hang time. Right, so what happens is when the hang to distance doesn't match, that's when you get in trouble. So if we have a 70 yard punt and a four or five hang, the hang to distance doesn't match. So when that guy catches the ball and the coverage is 30 yards away from him, we're gonna have some issues, right? So, cause you, get, you let the guy get a full head of steam running at guys in space and it's tough, right? So we always want the hang to distance to match up. Is that compounded by guys who are probably on the put coverage team for the first time at this level and the idea that, you know, now all of a sudden they're co they're at a coverage disadvantage. And is that what you saw from that return? Absolutely. And you can't miss tackles. You know, I mean, you look at, you know, Maurice Alexander's a pretty good little returner, you know, obviously. I mean, you saw the, the actual talent and skill. So you got to be able to make plays in space, and make tackles in space, but it, it's compounded by the distance. You know, if it's a little closer and the guy doesn't have time to build up the speed, then it's a little easier. But when he gets a chance to build up that speed and he can make his cuts at full speed and he already has really good short area quickness, it's tough. Do you think Jamison Crowder can still be effective for returners? I think he's gone through a 
lot, but he returned a lot last year in the mm -hmm. short amount of time. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I I think Jameson is very capable. Uh, you know, I, I think we have about three or four guys in our roster that are very capable. And when you look at all of them, uh, you know, most of them have all done it in this league. You know, Pimp's a young guy that has an opportunity. Jadon has done it in this league for a long time. Uh, Jameson, you know, Cole. So it's a, we got a bunch of different guys with a bunch of different options, but we want to see what Eric can do right now. And he's done a pretty good job, and he's very diligent. What did you see from Eric? On you know, he did a good job of fielding the ball. He's a typical young returner. They have to understand uh, situational football as far as like being able to protect himself with a fair catch like that last punt as he's running, you know, laterally. He probably should have just fair ca caught the ball as opposed to trying to catch it and just trying to make a play. He's got to be smart because the most important thing is the ball. And, uh, you know, Eric has great power. Quickness, really good short area quickness, and he runs tough. So, and he and he's a good kid. Hey, Matt, how much do you rely on veterans who have special teams experience to kind of lead some of the younger players? Yeah, that's a great question, Kim. I mean, it's you, you have to have that veteran leadership in your room. It is paramount to our success as a unit and as a group because. I can't answer all the questions, you know, Pops can't answer all the questions, Steve can answer all the questions, but if you have a veteran guy that's done it before and they're sitting in the locker room, and a lot of times these younger guys don't want to ask us because they don't want to feel like they don't know what they're doing, but they'll ask a veteran guy, you know, about a technique or a scheme or whatever it is, and they can do it right in the comfort of the locker room, or they're sitting at the lunch table, or they're in the players' lounge, like whatever it is, they can ask, but that's extremely important to our success. You mentioned him. Mm -hmm. I mean, can he be a returner in this league? And how hard is it for a kid like that to make it as primarily a returner the way the rules are now? Yeah, it's, it's tough. It really is. It's tough. But, you know, most of the guys that make it in this league, it's, it's tough for him. You know, but Pimp has, he has the ability. Uh, he's a tough little player. He's very diligent in what he does. He has really good short area quickness. He has all the tools that you really want in a good returner. He just needs an opportunity. And, and I, you know, hopefully he'll get that in the next couple of weeks to where he can show everybody what he can do. You talk about experience with Eric Gray. How much does that make you want to, you know, give him most of the reps going forward yeah. here this week and again next yeah. week? Is that sort of where you're Yeah, at? I mean, you, you got to ramp him up quick. And, and it's not a ton. Of, the unfortunate part is there's not a ton of opportunity to go around. You know, especially, you know, if, if you get into a game to where you don't get a lot of punt opportunities or the opportunities that you get are plus area punts, you know, where the ball is going to be fair call inside the 10 is, is tough, you know. So uh, we're going to ramp him up quickly. Um, but again, what we do out here is important. You know, what, what we did in Detroit was important uh, or as far as like the practices are concerned. So. You know, those things have to take care of themselves, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's something that we all got to work work to ensure that we understand what we're getting and those guys get their opportunities at the same time. Thomas, is, with the shape that Graham is in and the way he kicks the ball, can he kick as long as he wants? You know, it, I was just talking about this with, uh, with Steven. You know, we, we try our best. You know, Graham does a great job of managing himself. Like, he understands – uh, his in game and uh, his off season his off season work is extremely important to his in season work. What I mean by that is he takes care of himself in the off season. He doesn't he doesn't do a ton of kicking. Uh, he'll take some time off to be with his kids, and he'll start to ramp it up around April, May. He doesn't do a ton of kicking in the off season, but once he starts, you know, getting into camp. He starts to ramp it up a little bit, and he does a phenomenal job of keeping himself in shape as far as just, you know, the prehab stuff, the rolling out, uh, and then just managing himself during the course of the week. And, uh, you know, yeah, he'll, he can kick as long as he wants. As long, you know, as long as he keeps making them, he'll be, he'll be able to kick as long as he wants. Thank you.